Test the hobo here, and I'm back as promised. We are working on the door panels here for this issue, the non-presenting doors. I told you this was a temporary solution. Now I'm going to show you what you need to do the permanent solution. Uh, things that you definitely need will be a flathead screwdriver, some form of wrench or socket with a 10 millimeter. I have both a socket and a wrench, and you are going to need a T30, that's a Torx 30 uh, male side screw. Um, if you have it, plastic pry tool, just make sure that you're not going to scratch up some of your panels. Uh, if you need to do it with a screwdriver, do it, but be very, very careful. So first we got to pop this plastic panel out here. And then in here, it's a rubber piece. So I just use the screwdriver because it works really easy. And you're not going to be able to really scratch that up. Now down in here, we have a 10 millimeter bolt. And then in here, we've got those Torx 30s that I spoke about. Now, if you have an impact driver, it'll be a lot easier to do this with an impact driver as it will go much, much, much faster. But I unfortunately just this morning lent out my impact driver. So, hand tools it is. But at least it's better this way. We'll do it with the hand tools. We'll show you just how quick it really even is with hand tools. So. Now be careful when you're doing this. You want to hold your fingers on the edge of this door handle because you do not want to scratch the door handle because it would really stink to have a rough spot on the bottom of your handle when you're opening it. All right, now that those are off, you really, you just yank. Get your hands behind it. This has a safety. All right, the other door that I worked on did not have this, but you see there's a little safety screw here. We'll see if that gets in the way. So now once you do this, there's gonna be a couple electrical wires that you need to remove. Take your time, be patient. You don't wanna rip your electrical pieces apart. It's always a giant hassle if you have to rebuild a connector. This actually makes it so much more difficult than the other one. I did not have this. I'm going to try to get in here and do it without cutting it, but in the end of the day, we might have to take the utility knife to that.
All right, so you don't necessarily have to cut that. As I said, if you can, leave that on there without cutting it off. Next, we got to get in here and I'll seal. This will make the video a little bit harder because I don't think you'll be able to see into this angle. So here we go, we're gonna have to get these screws out. Uh, these screws right here. And these are either, I believe they're T27s. I only have a T25, so I'm just being very careful removing it. I think I have one extra impact driver. Let's see. There we go. I don't have any of the extensions, but hopefully we get smaller distances. We got this. Hello. Hello. No, can you go around the front if you don't mind? No, yeah. Oh, yep, yeah, you go around. Hello. Uh, replacing the door handles on this. So there's four screws in here, 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 and here. They're a little bit difficult to get the other ones, but we're going to get them.
So here we go, we have this first door handle out. And as you could see here, I pulled the plastic back and, and here is our culprit. It already has the metal replacement and even the metal replacement broke. So no matter what you do, even when you go to the upgraded ones, they are still going to fail, as I said earlier. So I'm gonna prop this phone up here. And then I'm gonna get one of the replacement ones that we got right here. right here it's this pin that's got to get pushed through and then this has to go back onto here so uh, that's going to be a little difficult to do with the video so i will uh i'll pause the video and then we'll get back once it's in okay so to show you what we did here is we did replace the piece right there so this is the old piece as you could see the bottom is cracked off and we replaced it with a new one. Seeing that this is metal, this means that it has already been replaced before and the metal ones still do break. So what we did to take that, to take this piece out in here, is first I took a, a quarter inch extension and I placed it on this and then I just hammered it down with a rubber mallet. And then once I got that smooth with here, then I just took a nail that was slightly smaller, that was a big three inch long nail, and then hammered that down just enough so that I could get this a majority of the way out. And then after that, you should be able to pry it out with your hands right here or with a needle nose plier. And then after that, you turn it around, you undo these four screws with the Torx bit, you fold this forward, and then you just push the handle out and you slide that metal piece in. And now I'm going to prep this up here and show you that now this should be able to work. So I do, we'll still have to silicone on the cover piece, but before I do that, you always want to test things beforehand. And there you go. It just auto presented itself automatically. That is exactly what we are looking for. All right, so we're back here. We got the front door done. It works. Now to the back door. I'm going to I'm not going to record the first part cuz it's it's pretty much the same. You're going to take this rubber piece out, take out the 10 millimeter here, then you're going to take this plastic piece out, pull out the two torques here. You're going to then yank on the whole door, disconnect the different electrical pieces, then we're going to get into the door. Once once I get the handle out, that's where I'm going to show you that, that these handles all kind of look a little bit different. So I'm going to get to this, and then we'll come right back. All right, so here we go. Door handle two. Same thing. Broken metal piece. So it looks like everything else is fine. So I'm going to prop this phone up, and, and we'll get to it. So this is the side that the gear goes on, so that's the side that we want to hit down. There we go.
All right, this one's a little bit of a tighter fit than the other one, so we will just do it completely with the screw here. more we got to go down as I said before we got to remove these screws so we could flip this forward to get into that area over here. And that one isn't even in. So whoever took this apart last time lost the screw. Because as I said, these things just always keep breaking anyway. So this is going to be a never-ending process of what you're going to have to work on on your Model S. Because if this is missing a screw, clearly someone was in there. As well as the fact that this is metal. And originally, uh, that they weren't metal. So the metal was already an upgrade. So someone has installed the upgrade and it still broke with the upgraded one. So... No luck on Tesla anytime soon fixing this. Because it's not really recall necessarily, because you could always get out from the outside from the inside. So it doesn't really matter much to them. They don't care too much. As long as you could get in, in an accident, you could get out in an accident. It's not really recall worthy, I guess. Now there's these little bushings in here that you got to get out with a flathead or a pry tool. Now you push the handle forward. And you slide this under the micro switch into that section. And now you just hammer it back down. And then you would screw this back in. There you go now, micro switch makes contact. We're in there. And you want to just try to hammer that back to wherever the line is that you saw before. 
trying to make it about even on both sides so that it just doesn't fall out in the future. There you go. Well, uh... And there you go. Make sure you don't pinch any of these wires in here. This shaft has to go up into there. And then you just screw everything back together. And yours, as I said before, should have the fourth screw here. But if you don't, apparently uh, someone else has already worked on your car before and not put it back together properly. Always before you put it back in, you always do want to make sure that it works. The door is locked. There you go. Pulling it unlocks it. So we are good. Now it is safe to push this in as long as you do it very slowly when it's off. When it's on, I do not recommend it as there is tension on the motor and you don't want to break the motor. So I'm just going to now put this plastic back on, making care to make sure this plastic try to stays in that groove as much as possible to keep as much moisture out. And then we'll put it all back together and we'll go on to the third. Now the third, these first two had the micro switches. So they had the micro switches here here and here as well as they had a black motor now the last one that's actually the first door that i opened before when i was charging when i bought the micro switches thinking that's what failed and i noticed there is no micro switch that one has a a clear motor that is for comparison's sake it looks like this and all these micro switches are not here. And on the back side, there is just a, a magnetic sensor that just senses the magnetic field. That That's the newer one. These are the older ones. Um, but when, once again, what, what failed wasn't even the micro switches. It was just the, uh, the little metal gear arms that push it out. And here we go. This is the last handle. This is the updated handle. As you see, there are no micro switches anywhere. There is just the gear, the metal pickup, the gear ties into this, which is a magnetic sensor control, and that reads information from that over there. So what that does is that just reads a degree of movement, and that is what's supposed to let the door know whether or not um, it should be in the open or the closed position. As you can see, too, here, these newer ones, it's not just plastic that's here, it's not a like a rubber thin film. It's a hard piece of plastic that also has the extra controller now that is probably what uh, processes the data for that. So as you can see here, we are gonna replace this. It's pretty rusty and I feel that that is what it is. I do not have a Tesla manual, so I can't go in there and read different diagnostic codes as to what it's gonna be or no you know, if there's a certain frequency that I could test through here or, you know, a, a resistance. So this is really going to be just hit or miss. Uh, it would be wonderful if there was, you know, easy, open, accessible data for for Teslas to work on. But right now there isn't. Um, there are fewer and fewer companies that are now coming coming and working on them. Like Electrified Garage, they, they now, I believe, have three locations. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this out. And I'm going to hope that that is what needs to be done. If the door handle still doesn't work, then it will probably have to be a shop visit because it will be either this magnetic module, something over here, 
or possibly the actual data processor here. So we will find out shortly. I'm going to put this together and then we will go there and see what works. Hopefully it does.